arrived at Chihali in uh, 2008, so this is going into my eighth year now. It's been an interesting place to work, uh, challenging to say the least, but also one of the most satisfying places I've worked. 17 years I've been on the project. During that period of time I've seen lots of things happening in Chihali. So it's very rare for, for anybody to see from build through to commissioning, through operation, even change roles and then disconnect her and take her into port and hand her over. You know, there's not many people that can say that. When you think it's aligned perfectly with my youngest daughter, her birth, when we left Belfast, you know, and she's 16 now, so I, I know exactly how old Charlene is. Shahalian started life in the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast. The engineering phase saw her design to withstand some of the most challenging conditions BP had produced in. West of Shetland was a new frontier, and FPSO design was in its early stages. The concept and the, the initial engineering that went behind Shahalian was, was groundbreaking and it hadn't been done before. They weren't sure if it was going to even work. A lot of apprehension. Manage the, the seasickness, the motion, you know, how is this going to behave? Is it going to be safe? Lots and lots of questions going through. The hull was built entirely in Belfast. The production modules they were built at Ardesia and then they were shipped to Belfast and then installed. The Atlantic is different. So when the weather comes across from, from the States, you know, there's no landmass to disturb it. It really builds. A lot of the technology was groundbreaking when the, the Shahali was designed. It was, it was one of the first FPSOs actually in the location. The original name for the area was the Atlantic Frontier, so there was, there was that kind of feeling that you were doing something that was completely new. I'll never forget the, the time when we had our minimum anchorage and we actually became fixed. Never forget that. They let go of all the tugs and there we were on our own. After 18 months of construction and commissioning, Shahalian and the team on board were finally set to start production. There's huge reserves of hydrocarbons in the west of Shetland on the later continental shelf, and that's why the FPSO was brought into play. It was designed to be able to be anchored in this location. Immediately, the west of Shetland conditions stamped their mark. Production had only just started before Shahalian was put through its first major test. It was a wild night and the weather was bad. The vessel was moving about quite a lot. Sometime in the late evening, it would have been maybe 9 or 10 o'clock, um, there was a, just a huge bang. It wasn't really classified as a 100-year storm. Computers flew off the desks, everything fell over, cabinets fell over. The vessel was pushed back on the first wave and it was just the wrong frequency period of the waves. As we came back on our anchors, the second wave crashed into us and uh, actually split the hull on the, on the front of the vessel. This whole area was wide open at the time. When we contacted the, the standby boat to say, we think we've got a hole in the bow, he says, I know you've got a hole in the bow, he says, I can see the light shining out. Could we sink? Is it a potential? We just had to ride the storm out patch it up as best we could and manage it, and that's exactly what we did. Well, I'm a Shetlander and uh, we're a sort of seagoing people. Can my, my ancestors have been uh, associated with the sea for many years. It's yeah. mama nature and you think, wow. In 2007, a different challenge faced the team, one that would test not only the emergency response, but also their bravery. Fire crews had to head eight floors down to the bottom of the hull with no other means of escape to a location between two huge diesel storage tanks to tackle a fire in the compressor room. At times, the fire reached over a thousand degrees. All this place was, uh, was a blaze. Light fittings were, were just dripping, melting plastic. They were pressurized oil cans close to the area. Uh, they were exploding. They were flying around like missiles. It's never been easy. It's always had its own unique, I would say, unique problems which have uh, always, always been overcome. When we do set the direction, give people the, the leadership and the space to get on with what they're good at, they get after it. To actually take on that fire and come out and win and not hurt anyone 
that was uh, that was a fantastic achievement. That's what builds the team because it's not one person. That's what Shahalian's good at. People very very close close knit in all the teams, services, everybody integrated. You, it was seamless. It, uh, it really was. There was uh, one family. Yeah. You spend uh, close on 50 50 percent of your life with with these guys. So. Luckily on here, there's always been, it's always been a good sense of humour. There's always been people got on well. I've been on other installations, and there's not that same camaraderie. After 17 years moored in the harsh west of Shetland environment, and having produced over 370 million barrels of oil, BP and its partners took the decision to replace Shahalian. I've seen peak production, 178,000 barrels a day. Bessel did what she was designed to do. Other other FPSOs across the, the fleet have all learned lessons from Shahali. And the last year was, well, what a way to go out, you know, we, we actually exceeded our the target that they expected for Shahali and so that was a nice feeling to end in a, in a real glorious year, if you like. Everybody probably tells you it's a dump and it's, it's a skip, but it's been a great place to work, I've found. My learnings have been right from the start to the end. I feel as if I know every single pipe work of this, this vessel. Most people would say, wow, and you actually managed to stay out in the Atlantic doing all that production with all the adversity and all the stresses and strains on the vessel. And they would say, a remarkable achievement. Yeah, when I actually carry my last bag off here, that's going to be very emotional. After a complex off-station campaign taking over two years, all the mooring lines and risers were disconnected, and Shahalian could begin the journey back to port. Some people spend as much time offshore as they do with their families, so it's, it's a big part of your life. So just to walk away I think would be quite difficult. In the early hours of June the 2nd, 2014, Shahalian was towed into port. The 500-mile journey to Rotterdam would mark the final chapter in the vessel's life with BP. And the end of a journey for hundreds of people who worked on board. You, you sit back and back on the beach. You think, "Wow, that was a that was a hell of a trip, but it was fun." So we've had our successes and we've had our not so good uh, moments as well. Everybody on board has somewhere new to go to, new challenges, new opportunities, new people to meet. My youngest son actually worked in Shahalian. Uh, he's now working on Glen Lyon and uh, Korea. The Glen Line will be a challenge as well, I mean, it, it won't be plain sailing by any means because the west of Shetland is one of the most challenging regions in the globe. I hope they have as much fun as we've had over the years, uh, it's been great here, no doubt my son will keep me posted. <laughs> I do Shahalin again in a heartbeat.